So in our last video, we really described how a solution behaves based on the information presented in a graph. So we evaluated just by how much was dissolved to determine if it was supersaturated, saturated, or unsaturated. Now we're actually going to determine using an equation how much we have dissolved per solution using this concept called molarity, uh, which is going to help us for more of a lab-based application where we try and mix together two solutions of different chemicals for a chemical reaction to occur. Because again, from a balanced chemical equation, we don't really want to take into account the mass of a reactant. We want to know how many moles of a chemical are dissolved because the mole ratio from the balanced equation is the component that we use uh, for the stoichiometry of a chemical reaction. So I just want to talk a little bit about this concept called molarity. Uh, the most common term that we use kind of interchangeably with it is called concentration. All right, so there's like that old joke of like, oh, like, you know, people are confused because the orange juice said to concentrate, so you thought really hard about it standing in the grocery store. Concentration just refers to whether or not the contents of a container are really saturated if they're concentrated. All right, so it's not like amount of focus. We're talking about how much material is dissolved. Do we have a lot dissolved within a given volume or do we have very little dissolved within a given volume? So molarity or concentration is a measure of the amount of moles of solute in a given volume of solution. Okay. And again, we kept this little bit down here uh, to remind you that for a solution or for a concentration, these two substances are evenly, thoroughly mixed together. So while we're calculating the moles of a solute using the volume of a solution, we have to remember that a solution, by definition, is something that's evenly, thoroughly mixed together. Right. So just to kind of reiterate some of the terms from our last video, solute is the substance that's being dissolved. So in the Kool-Aid example, the Kool-Aid powder is our solute and the water is our solvent. So I always refer to the solvent as the dissolver, right? And so we wanna convert our solute always into moles as molarity is a ratio of how much material is dissolved within the liquid, not by mass, but by number. And then the solvent, we always want to convert into liters. Our reference point is always moles per liter. So it's important to remember that 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter, because we'll be using that conversion quite a bit. And the symbol for molarity that we'll see in our work and in our notes is a capital M, and the units stand for moles per liter. And so the equation is pretty straightforward. The molarity of a solution is equal to moles divided by liters. Okay, so if we know moles and we know liters, we can solve for the molarity of the solution. If we know the liters of water and the molarity of the solution, we can solve for the moles and all that kind of different arrangements for that. All right, so the first practice problem is pretty straightforward. We want to find the molarity, so we're solving for capital M. Given 0 0.9 grams of sodium chloride dissolved into 1,000 milliliters of water. Again, molarity is moles per liter. So we've got grams, we've got milliliters. So we have to do two separate conversions before we can even plug in moles in the numerator and liters in the denominator. So the first one I'm going to do is convert 100 milliliters. And just like we did down here, if we know 1,000 milliliters is equal to 1 liter, then milliliters goes in the denominator, and for every 1,000 milliliters, there's 1 liter. So if we have 100 milliliters, we've only got a tenth of what that's equivalent to. So this is equal to 0.1 liters. So we can plug that into the denominator because it's the correct label. Again, milliliters will cancel out. And then we need to convert 0.9 grams of sodium chloride into moles. So we can do that just like we've done with our mole to mass ratio. So in one mole of sodium chloride, 
we know the mass of a sodium atom is 22.99. The mass of a chlorine atom is 35.45. So all together, our molar mass is 58.44. And so once we've canceled out our labels, 0.9 divided by 58.44 is equivalent to 0 0.0154 moles. So now we divide the two and we get 0 0.154 capital M NaCl. Okay, so again, that capital M is like our unit for molarity, and that's telling me the number of moles that I would dissolve if I had a liter of solution, and everything, again, stays in that ratio. So if I pour out 10 milliliters of this concentration, I know in that 10 milliliters, I have a tenth of the number of moles that would have been dissolved in one liter. And we'll see that kind of play out in the next few practice problems. Okay. So I want to know how many moles are present in 1.2 liters of a 0 0.24 molar sodium sulfate solution. So again, we're using this equation, molarity is equal to moles over liters. We're provided with the volume, 1.2 liters, and we're provided with the molarity, and all we're doing is solving for moles. So we've got two of the three components of that equation. And since all we're doing is solving for moles, not grams of solute present, all we need to do is solve for X, and that's the label that we want for our final answer. So if we think about this, there's two ways to solve it. We can multiply 1.2 to both sides because it's in the denominator, or we could visualize this as being a fraction and then solve that as a proportion. Okay. Either way, we're going to get 1 times X, so X moles is equal to the other cross, 1.2 times 0.24 to get the number of moles as 0 0.288 moles of Na2SO4. Okay. Again, if we wanted to go then to grams, we could do kind of like what we did up here and use that mole to mass ratio and convert back to grams. So in the last problem, we've got a little bit of two parts, right? We're again given the molarity, we're given a volume, but we got to watch our units and we're solving for grams. So it's kind of the reverse to this first problem where we were solving for the molarity. Now we're given the concentration and we want to know how many grams were added to make it have that molarity of 1.5. So again, in order for us to find grams, grams is connected to moles. So if we plug in what we know, so far, all we've got is the fact that we're trying to solve for X moles, but we can't use that volume until we convert that to liters. So the first thing we need to do is convert 330 milliliters into liters. So now that we've got 0 0.33 liters, we've got enough information to figure out how many moles were dissolved into this volume to give it that ratio. So again, we're going to multiply the volume to both sides. We get 1.5 times 0.33, which equals 0 0.495 moles of lithium fluoride, which is a plus one minus one compound. So it's just LIF. And then to find the final answer of grams, we're going to convert moles into grams. So again, moles is going to be in the denominator. And per mole of lithium fluoride, we've got one lithium atom at 6.94. We've got one fluorine atom at 19.00, because that 8 is going to round up those two 9s. So 19.00 plus 6.94 gives us a molar mass of 25.94 grams. And then we're going to multiply across to get 12.8 grams. 
of lithium fluoride as our final answer, as mass of solute dissolved into that volume to give us that molarity, give us that ratio.